Hello folks and welcome to Paddock Pass, the Bahrain Grand Prix edition 2017 pre-race. Welcome to Sakia. The weather is unbelievably hot. It's 38, 39 degrees centigrade, which in American is hot. Very hot. Uh, I was sitting by the pool yesterday, enjoying the sun. Not enjoying the sun, actually, because when they say tanning cream over here, it doesn't mean sun cream, as you or I would know it, that contains any SPF. No, apparently it's ranch dressing, and I got sunburnt. Anyway, ping on my phone, and up comes a tweet. Fernando Alonso's racing the Indy 500. Aha, what day is it, thought I. April the 1st? No, it's not. That was a fortnight ago. Turns out it's actually happening. Um, amazing. Fernando's been telling us for years that he wanted to race the Indy 500, that he wanted to do Le Mans one day. But none of us ever thought it would really happen. And yet here we are, and here it is. Fernando Alonso will contest the 101st running of the Indy 500. Absolute fever. I think pretty much everyone in this paddock is thrilled for him and excited for him. So we ran down uh, to a press conference that was hastily organized yesterday uh, to talk to him. So here are his thoughts yesterday. And then we caught up with him about an hour ago. And here's... Uh, <clears throat> what his thoughts are today and also just looking into this weekend a little bit. Fernando, why the Indy 500? Why now? Well, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's um, one of the most or the most prestigious race in the world and uh, uh, to, to become the best driver in the world, which is the, the, the main target for all of us, you need to to win the best races in the world and I think in the past I'm used to to see the best drivers driving for the best cars uh, in the best venues of in the world and the best races in the world so you know I, I've been in Formula One I, I succeed in Formula One and now it's, it's time to to try something else and uh, uh, Indy 500 is, is so uh, tempting and uh, you know it's a big challenge because it's a short period of time now uh, from now to the race couple of weeks only that I need to fit three Formula One Grand Prix also in the middle but uh, it's so challenging and, and will be so um, demanding that is so exciting as well. It's such a unique race it's very long very fast and really very intense what are your expectations from a competitive perspective? Well I think that remains to be seen I think the the how competitive we will be um, it's difficult to tell because all my driving skills are developed for Formula One cars, for uh, uh, circuits, not uh, super speedways. Uh, also, the, the racing in Formula One is very different. We don't race as close as, as they are normally. Um, I think the starting procedures, the pit stop procedures, there are a lot of things that I have to learn in, in a short period of time. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm starting now. I'm watching all the races on, on the computer, on YouTube, on all these things and I will have also help from uh, from uh, the teammates from from Andretti Autosport and uh, all the all the all the guys there so uh, looking forward uh, for this for this tremendous challenge but uh, you know thanks to, to McLaren to Honda to Andretti because it's a fantastic opportunity you have one month until practice starts has it sunk in yet just what a huge undertaking this is I think uh, in a way you know there is um, this feeling of you know there is no time enough to uh, to get ready but uh, on the other hand everyone that i'm talking with you know they are so sure that it's going to be fine you know and they have a full uh, trust on, on on me and uh, on the team so uh, that that's quite that's quite good you know in terms of um, relax a little bit and uh, and be ready but yeah is an intense month ahead of us. I will travel to uh, to America a couple of times in this month, and uh, yeah, in, on those planes I will I will study as much as I can. The last Formula One world champion who decided to miss the Monaco Grand Prix to compete at the Indy 500 was Jim Clark. You're now in that same bracket with him. How does that sort of sit with you? He won. <laughs> that's that's a good uh, that's a good thing, a good starting point, uh, but. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a step forward in, in my career that I have to do it. Uh, if, if I want to, to be the best in the world and the most complete driver in the world, you have to, to win you know, all the series that are, are there. And uh, um, I never drove in an oval, I never drove in uh, IndyCar, but um, you know, I need to adapt, I need to um, 
praise my game. I need to step forward and uh, I need to to learn all these techniques and you know uh, and, and be able to drive those cars and to win in in, in Indy 500 is something that I don't know if will happen this year, but uh, I want that happen one one year in the future. Been a busy 24 hours for you. How crazy is your social media gone? Because I know mine's gone pretty crazy. Yeah, very, very crazy. But um, unfortunately, I don't have time to to, yeah. to enjoy all this moment, you know, because you are in the middle of uh, the preparations for this race. So more or less, I try to, to follow a little bit, but uh, I would like to spend much more time answering some some of the uh, tweets and, uh, you know, some of the teammates that uh, are wishing me good luck as well. So uh, I will try to do it from Monday because now the, the full preparation will be on, on Bahrain and uh, tomorrow with the free practice, qualifying and race, uh, hopefully we can get these points that I think we deserve in Australia and, and in China with two retirements when we were on the points and hopefully here we can we can finish the race. We've had people telling us they haven't been to the Indy 500 in 20 years, some of them haven't been watching IndyCar in years and they're going to go this year, they're going to drive through the night to get there just to watch you. Yeah, there are... Uh, a few people, more more than uh, than we think, probably. Also from Spain, I, I know that uh, there are uh, uh, booking flights uh, from from yesterday night quite uh, quite quickly, and uh, you know some many many of my friends will go there as well, and uh, I heard many uh, team members that will be also there. You know, is is uh, Sylvia will be in uh, in, uh, in America and, and some other uh, uh, people from the team. So we see how many of uh, McLaren and Honda will be in Monaco because I'm start to be worried. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking at this weekend, uh, two race weekends gone. They've both been very difficult, but in both of them, you've been able to pull this car up into the top 10 where arguably it doesn't deserve to be. How are you doing it and can you hope to do it again this weekend? I, I, let's see. I think uh, it was a surprise for us. Uh, to put the car on the points uh, until until the retirement on, on both cases and uh, I think here is going to be tough but it was the same feeling in China and in Australia and, and at the end we do it uh, and we did it so I think uh, we need to remain optimistic and, and do our best. So Alonso clearly delighted uh, with his opportunity to go and do the Indy 500. I asked Zach Brown yesterday, do you think Fernando is entirely aware of what he's got himself into? And he chuckled. Uh, there's a part of me that thinks Fernando looks at the Indy 500 and thinks that'll be fun and has no idea what a massive undertaking it's going to be. But if anyone can do it, uh, turn up and be competitive, got to look at Fernando with Andretti Autosport. That one with Alexander Rossi last year in a team that had three drivers in the fast nine, five drivers in the top 11 on the grid, ran consistently at the front of the field all the way through the 500s. You know, if he wants to be with anybody, Honda, Andretti Autosport, it's a good place to be. Uh, so yeah, hopeful for Fernando that he can go over to Formula One Proud and, and hopefully put in a, a good result. The question though arising from that is who replaces him? And as of right now, McLaren don't have an answer, genuinely don't have an answer. If it was as simple as saying, well, Jensen Button will step in because that's what his contract stipulates, they would have already said, Jensen Button will stand in. So why haven't they? Which leads us to think that there is more to this. Uh, will Nick De Vries, the team's young driver, step in? He is the only other driver on McLaren's books that has a super license. And if it's not to be him, well, then we have a quandary. Who would it be? Maybe Paul de Resta, uh, Williams reserve driver. Maybe Alex Lynn, who was Williams reserve driver, wants to bring 12 hours earlier uh, this year and is a very competitive, dependable, safe pair of hands, has raced at Monaco with GP2. Would you pick a driver from World Endurance Championship, a Buemi, a Degrassi? Would you look over to Super Formula? Pierre Gasly, GP2 champion, is racing for Honda out in Super Formula, so we'll be uh, used to big aero cars, big sticky tyres, fast cars. Problem there is he's a Red Bull driver. Andretti Autosport can't do driver switches with their drivers, only Alexander Rossi currently holds a super licence and he's not going to give up the chance to defend the Indy 500s. Although Andretti Autosport do have two drivers that have only recently had their super licences laps uh, and they are their uh, Formula E drivers. Antonio Felix da Costa and Robin Freins. But we're getting, I think, towards the periphery of what is achievable and maybe jumping on a hype train that I'd like to stoke the fires of. Anyway, who knows? Um, fascinating thing, though, is that Stoffel van Dorn will essentially be the team's leader come Monaco. What does he think of Fernando Alonso's decision to basically leaving him in the lurch? Thank you very much. Would you like to go and do the Indy 500? Um, one day, maybe, yeah. Um, 
Uh, I think it's, it's yeah a very iconic race. I've been following it the uh, past couple of years. Um, Alex Rossi winning it last year as a, as a rookie. And, and yeah, a guy I've raced against as well in, in GP2. So it's a, yeah, it's a very cool race. Um, but for the moment, I'll stick to Formula 1, yeah. And you're going to be team leader in Monaco. How have you found that? When Fernando said he was going to leave the team to go off and do the Indy 500s, does it feel like he's leaving you in the lurch? Or, do you, or are you happy with the responsibility? Um, I, honestly, I don't really think it changes much. Um, obviously, Monaco is a special Grand Prix for us, and and yeah, hopefully that will uh, will provide us an opportunity to to score a uh, score a lot of points there. Um, but yeah, I think it's an opportunity that Fernando wanted to do. Um, McLaren is back in Indy as well, so it's it's yeah, a great collaboration. And I, yeah, I just wish uh, wish everyone everyone luck. I hope uh, on both ends it will be uh, will be a successful weekend. With McLaren going back to Indy, I guess it means one day you might have a chance as well. Who knows? Who knows? But for the moment, I'm sticking to uh, to Formula One. Who would you like your teammate to be in Monaco if you if you had a choice? I know you'll probably say Jensen, but if Jensen wasn't available, who who would you like it to be? It's difficult to say. I mean, um, no preference from my side. I think uh, the team's got it under control, and you know I'm confident that they will take uh, take the best decision. Welcome back to Paddock Pass here in Bahrain. Now, Red Bull Racing uh, had a really good Chinese Grand Prix. Season hadn't started off fabulously, certainly for that man, uh, breaking down before the race had even started in his home country of Australia. But China was much better. Max Verstappen with an astonishing drive from 16th of the grid through to third place uh, on the podium and a great battle between himself and his teammate Dan. Thanks for getting in the way, mate. Uh, between himself and Daniel Ricciardo over those last few laps. Ricciardo ultimately not quite able to get on terms with his teammate. And that has led to an increased discussion after Australia and China of DRS. It's usage in 2017 and whether the drivers are going to have to change the way in which they race to make the most out of DRS this year. So we spoke to Daniel about that and also to his teammate about that brilliant drive through the field. Uh, and, uh, yeah, where they find themselves this weekend and what should theoretically be a much harder contest for them here in Bahrain. Max, it was a great race in China that everyone's talking about, but under normal conditions, is a podium uh, really a possibility? No. No, I mean, we have to be realistic. I think fifth and sixth at the moment is what we can do if nothing happens, you know, to the guys in front. So, um, yeah, we'll try to close the gap, of course, but at the moment, yeah, fifth and sixth. It looks now that you're going to be having a bit of an update for Barcelona way earlier than expected. How much work's going on back at the factory to ensure that you, you, you are competitive? Yeah, I think mainly the biggest updates for Barcelona are from the car. Um, and then, uh, then we'll see. I mean, to be honest, I just wait and see until it's on the car. I, I don't want to speculate about you know, how much we will gain or whatever. So uh, I just wait. OK, um, final one for me on Fernando Alonso, who's going off to do the Indy 500. What do you think of that? Is it something that you'd ever consider doing? Well, it's very brave and uh, I will definitely try to follow it. I mean, uh, it's something which I think excites him as well, but I'm also really excited to see how he will do. I think, you know, he's one of the, the greatest drivers out there. So uh, I'm sure if he gets the right guidance and, uh, you know, he has enough practice hours, then he can do a good job. China great last few laps really exciting but the move ultimately didn't happen a lot of people talking about drs how has it changed for you as a racing driver from what looked like you hit a button and it was easy sail by mm -hmm. to now something completely different yeah it's uh i think there's been times where it's been massive for whatever reason and it's like the passes have been too easy obviously i <laughs> if i was in max's position i'd probably say yeah it's fine when i was in front if he was in front but uh Look, yeah, when I was behind, like the slipstream and the, the, the effect of DRS just doesn't seem as big as it was last year, I guess, putting it simply. So, um, yeah, that was that. I just felt like I was, especially to long straight in China, I was, uh, I was getting onto the straight not that far behind. And I think any other year it would have been pretty easy into the braking zone. But I was just kind of like, just ne never getting close enough. So I was just a bit frustrated with that more than anything. I was like, come on, any, any other year this would have worked. But uh that was that was all that was really so i i do feel the effect is less than it has been the moves that we saw in china were mostly down in turn six certainly more out of drs than than within drs is that a good thing that it's actually got to be fought for rather than sort of handed over on a plate i think yeah like it's 
it's a bit it is a bit boring when you can just sail past someone down the straight and then pull back onto the racing line before braking i think that's that's a bit too much but um yeah i mean at the same time you do want to see overtaking so it was good that you could get some into turn six without any yeah, drs but um yeah uh, we'll see it's obviously in my case it was kind of a bit on the other spectrum but uh yeah i think it will be all right but to follow is harder I, I believe it is harder so i fear some tracks might become a little bit uh stale uh, Fun. Sorry. thanks ted fernando is going to do the indy 500 this yeah. year is it something that you would ever consider doing and what do you make of fernando's choice i mean uh firstly for him i think it's cool uh i'm i'm happy for him to be taking this opportunity and uh, yeah, I think it's for him it's a good time to do it. Unfortunately, in his case, he's not fighting really for anything at the moment in, in terms of a championship with F1 with, with his situation. So, yeah, it's, it's just a, another, I'll call it a, a pretty cool life experience that he can, he can now uh, take. So that's cool. Um, would I do it? I think uh, Indy, Indy kind of scares me, actually. I'll, I'll, I'll take a Daytona 500. Indy 500, I'd need to work up some courage. <laughs> <laughs> now, while Red Bull Racing found themselves in a position that they don't necessarily expect to replicate, certainly for the next few races given the competitive order, spare a thought for Force India, and particularly that man, Sergio Perez. He, all season long, has said that the Force India, in his mind, is the slowest car in the midfield battle. And yet, two races out of two now, not just he, but his teammate Esteban Ocon have scored points. It's a phenomenal effort from both drivers, but particularly so for Perez when you consider that he has now scored points in the last 12 consecutive Grand Prix. Um, it's not just two races in the points for you, it's 12 in a row. That's outstanding. How have you done it? Well, with the great help of the team, I think the team has done a fantastic job, considering that uh, probably in half of them we didn't have the pace to, to go into the points and we've scored good points and we're always in the midfield pack where a lot of accidents can happen in the first corner and and it means that the team has been doing a great job with the strategy calls with the setting up the car uh, me executing good races and and it's been a great form you know uh, 12 races might might not be a big number for for other teams but for us it's a huge number you know and a huge achievement that uh, we are extremely proud and we look forward to extend that and it was a very different formula last year to this year in terms of how you look after the tyres. How important is the relationship that you and Bernie have on the wall that you trust each other to make those right calls? Very important, you know, the feedback that I, that I give to the, to the team, especially in Shanghai with, the, with those difficult conditions. I think um, being in the team for a long time makes a huge difference and, and it just helps a lot. And how's Esteban settling in? Because he too has had his first two races with you guys in the points as well. Esteban, I think, is doing a good job. He's pushing hard and he's just uh, improving, improving. I think uh, he's a, a very strong driver. Uh, he's pushing me hard and, yeah, expecting to, to be like this uh, throughout the season. You know, I think he will, he will just get better and better through, through the year. You keep saying that this car is the slowest in the midfield, yet you keep scoring points. Do you really believe it's the slowest in the midfield or are you just saying that so the others don't think you're as fast as you actually are? No, when you look at our race paces and every time we see some simulations, we we, we tend to come to come out uh, one of the slowest teams out there in the midfield pack, you know. Uh, we've been doing great tech strategy goals, great qualifying laps and uh, I think that has made the difference. I think we are improving. I, uh, I hope here we can be a bit more stronger. Generally, Bahrain is a place that uh, suit, suits the, the car. We're good on on how to, to manage the tyres, so hopefully we can be a bit further up the grid. Welcome back to Paddock Pass. Now, uh, after Perez's heroics in China, I think it's probably about time, we also talk about some more heroics, this time from Haas F1's uh, Kevin Magnussen. Haas had done a brilliant job in Australia, frankly, of getting Roman Grosjean through the Q3, qualifying sixth, Ultimately, neither car saw the chequered flag and the team was massively disappointed because in this tight midfield battle that we expect in 2017, early points will be all important and Haas believed that they had underneath them a fast car. 
Well, fast forward to China and Kevin Magnussen proved that in tricky circumstances and in tricky conditions, the car does indeed have pace. He was overtaking at will, fought his way up into the point and uh, yeah, brought home rich reward for the team as uh, yet more frustration for Romain Grosjean. So uh, yeah, some time to talk to Kevin about that performance and also about Fernando Alonso going to the Indy 500. The reason we want to talk to Kev about that, if you remember, a couple of seasons ago when he was on the sidelines at McLaren, there was a plan in place for him to go and race for Andretti Autosport over in IndyCar. Ultimately, it was stifled because they needed him to stand in for Fernando Alonso early on in the season. So, uh, yeah, here is Kevin with quite a lot to talk about. Um, after the difficulties of Australia, uh, how much of a relief was it to get such a great race under your belt in China where you could push and show some of the potential of the car? It was it was nice to get a good result. Uh, I knew the car was was there and that you know the package is, is a good baseline. So it's nice to, to, to show that with uh, with some points in, in China. And um, yeah, looking just looking forward. It's nice that uh, it was only a couple of days rest uh, before going here because you know quite quite keen to to go again and see see what we can do so it's a very tight midfield pack and um, to be on top of it is, is very difficult you really need to to get get everything right to to be in the points but it's a it's a real challenge and uh, it's exciting how important was seeing the checkered flag to build on the, the the really solid foundation you've got and the fast foundation that you've got in that car how important to finish very important um, it's difficult to get points if you don't finish. <laughs> but in terms of building on, on what you know you have as a, as a raw basic package, how important is that? Is that experience of, of actually finishing a, a Grand Prix? I mean, it's, it's especially in the beginning of the season when we're learning all the time, it's important that you do, you, you do the maximum track time and, and obviously finish the races. Um, so it's been a bit limited, you know, especially for myself in, in, in Melbourne, not getting much running because of a few issues with the car. And then in, in China, uh, being washed away with smog and fog and I don't know, other things that uh, meant we couldn't, couldn't drive. So actually track, track time has been pretty limited. So I'm think, I think to, to be uh, on track when, when you can is important. Now, two years ago, when you were a, a reserve driver at McLaren, having had your, your time racing there, there was a lot of talk that you could possibly have switched over to IndyCar, driving for Andretti. I believe the deal was, was pretty close to being done, if not done, by the time you were called back to race in Australia. Fernando's obviously going to do the 500s. Um, how much were you looking forward to, to racing in the States, and what do you make of, of him going over to do the 500? Well, I'm, I'm really happy that I'm, that I'm in Formula One, and uh, that, that's always been my dream. It's always been uh, my focus uh, to be in Formula One and to to pursue my, my dream of winning uh, the World Championship in Formula One. So, you know, I was actually really relieved that I didn't have to go to IndyCar. I mean, it's a, it's a sport that I'm a huge fan of. I love uh, I love how they do things over there, and, and oval tracks is something that I need to, to try uh, before I stop my career. And I think, um, you know, racing over there is, is completely different to, to in Europe. So. It's absolutely something that inspires me a lot and uh, fascinates me. I want to try it one day, but you know, I'm happy, really happy that I can be in Formula One. Kevin Magnussen then pretty happy with his day's work in China just a few days ago. One man not so happy with the result in China, indeed not so happy with the way his first two races of 2017 have gone is Kevin's erstwhile former teammate uh, at Renault, Jolian Palmer. Just what is going wrong for the Brit in 2017? Joey, it's been a hard start to the season for you. How frustrated, how annoyed, how upset are you by, by things as they've turned out? Frustrated, yep. Um, just nothing's really clicked. Uh, so far I've had one, one good session, which was, which was FP3 in China, where the car was good and I could actually deliver what, what, I, could, what I could do. But uh, the rest of it, we've just been... Bad luck. Melbourne was a was a really tough weekend, and then um, China qualifying really was was very unlucky as well because I think we would have been in Q3 there. So it's all right. Two weekends down, it's not great, but we can we can start from scratch here again and and have a good weekend. You rolled the dice in China at exactly the right time. Why didn't that gamble pay off for you? Well, I think the safety car 
was uh, not at all what we needed, both me and Carlos, because we were on the right tyre, we had them up, up to temperature, we were already on the back of the guys on inters and going quicker, so we would have been, I think, P1 and 2 with, with no safety car. Um, but, yeah, the safety car came out and the tyres cooled down a lot, everyone got a more or less free pit stop, so um, in reality, after the safety car, I was already, already quite a long way down. We know the midfield battle is quite intense this year, incredibly close. Where, after these first two races, do you think Renault is? Not necessarily in out-and-out in -out pace, but in terms of race pace. Well, race pace, I think the races have been quite tough for us, to be honest. Um, obviously scoring no points, but uh, yeah, China was, was not easy. Out-and-out -out pace is more positive. I think Nico being Q3, uh, being seventh, is, is pretty good. So, uh, And also the main thing is I, I think we can really build on it. So I'm pleased with where we are pace-wise, and I think it doesn't take a lot to, to score points, just a clean weekend now. So from one Brit not having the best time to a Brit definitely having uh, the best of times, Lewis Hamilton leads the championship equal on points with Sebastian Vettel. I'd love to bring you some comments today from Sebastian Vettel about how much he's looking forward to the Bahrain Grand Prix and reigniting that furious and wonderful championship fight with Lewis Hamilton a decade in the making. I'd love to bring you some comments from Kimi Raikkonen, uh, particularly as the team seems to be putting him in the position of sacrificial lamb every weekend in terms of his race strategy. And yet Sergio Marchione turns around and says, we need to talk to Kimi about his motivation. Tough to be motivated when you're being thrown under the bus every weekend. As I said, I'd love to have some words from Ferrari. The Ferrari drivers, though, were not made available to the media today. Ferrari deciding that uh, we instead will hear from them on social media. Yet neither driver is on social media. So figure that one out. Anyway. Not going to get upset. Uh, Mercedes uh, are having a great time of it at the moment. And Lewis is relishing the fight with Sebastian Vettel as we arrive here in Bahrain. The car looks quick, but in certain corners, as we saw in Australia and as we saw in China, the Mercedes does struggle. It's the low speed corners and there are an awful lot of them here in Bahrain. Two races so far, from the outside at least, it looks like you guys are much more comfortable through medium to high speed stuff than in the slower stuff. There's a lot of slow corners here. Is that a worry for you this weekend, particularly on, on application of power and through those slow corners, the rear can be a bit a bit snappy? Um, particularly when it's uh, when it's hot and the tyres overheating. It's really about how you use the tyres and Ferrari have generally been quite good on, on utilising the tyres in the hotter conditions as we've seen in, in Melbourne. Um, so yeah, I think, but definitely the lower speed is plus we got a, it's a bigger harder it's a bigger heavier longer car so it takes a lot more work to get it around the, around the corner than it would do if the car was shorter you said last time out that the one thing you loved not just about karting but in formula one was that wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing and famously you had that wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle here with nico ferrari and mercedes look very close on power how hopeful are you of a wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle with seb this weekend man if that happens like like in 2014 it'd be the most epic race of our era, which I'm, which I'm super, super excited about. Um, I think that 2014 was obviously awesome, particularly when the Ferrari did come in in the mix. But um, yeah, having, for example, myself and Valtteri and and Kimi and, and Sebastian, all of us battling, I think it would be it would be epic. And I know you're very happy here, obviously, loving the racing and the, and the fight with Seb. Fernando, not quite so happy at the moment. He's going off to America, where you're absolutely massive, um, to race the 500s. Would you ever like to go and, and race in another discipline? Fernando says he wants to be seen as the greatest driver in the world, the best driver in the world. And he can only do that by racing in different disciplines and proving that he's the best in each of them. Um, yeah, I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't argue against him. Ultimately, with that task, you've got to race different cars um, I think it's really cool that firstly a Formula 1 driver in this day of time can go and do another freaking race because you normally you can't do any other races you're just stuck in doing what I've tried to do an NASCAR race for example during the season but you get shut down because Mercedes don't have a, an engine uh, supplier team out there and I'm like so it is I think it's great that he's in that position of course I'm sure he would prefer to be in the position where he can fight for the championship here but um who knows, maybe he starts a new thing for, for all of us drivers. And I was a bit surprised to hear that um, Van Dorme is going to be stopping out, just taking a, a, a race out, because he's in the early stages of his career. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't be doing that. But um, but I think for Fernando, he's done, you know, God knows, 200 races, 200 plus races. Um, I think it'll be a great, a great challenge for him. And I think he'll, I think he'll surprise a lot of people. 
So that's your lot from Paddock Pass for this pre-race edition of the Bahrain Grand Prix 2017. Uh, here are your times for the weekend. Um, don't forget that we are bringing you everything on the Friday and the Saturday on NBCSN and of course on the online app but race day itself will come to you on CNBC, so be sure that you remember that. Uh, it's going to be a great weekend here in Bahrain. It always is, and as Lewis Hamilton says, he looks back on that wonderful wheel-to-wheel -wheel fight he had with his teammate Nico Rosberg here a few years ago, and he wants that with Sebastian Vettel. We saw in clean air in China, the two of them have very similar pace. We saw it again in Australia at the start of the season. If those two get out ahead, and if nothing gets in between them, we could have fireworks here under the lights in the desert. I can't wait. Don't miss a second of it. For now, though, from us, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.